Today I want to talk about a uh, kind of like resource that language learners usually forget about, usually like overlook, and that is your local library. Now, I live in a town that's barely big enough to have a library, and it's not a very big town, but I was in there picking up a book that my mom wanted me to go get. And I was looking at this uh, poster they had of the Dewey Decimal System. It showed all the different categories for, you know, books and stuff in the library. And I noticed that there's a whole category uh, all about language books. And I got really interested. I was like, oh, that's awesome. I think it's, I believe it's like the 400s. Those, that's all language material. And I got real excited. And... I went to that section and looked at the books and well I, I have a small library there's only about two shelves of language books and that was it not very many but I did manage to find two books that I thought were really useful to my language study and one of them was Chinese calligraphy I showed this in my video that I made yesterday uh, this is on Chinese characters obviously and it shows how they change through time. So I'll give you a picture showing what they originally were. See, I think that's pretty cool, you know, because it, it looks like a horse to begin with, and then over time it evolved into what it is now. And I, that really helped me remember the characters by looking at what it was, what it used to be. And it'll give you, like, the stroke order and different things, too, so you know how to write them. I'll show you here again shows the stroke order. This is a fairly easy character. Here's another one. So this has been real beneficial to my Chinese study. Learning them characters, getting them imprinted in my mind. Because I mean I do pretty good on the computer like typing them and stuff but actually writing them is a different story because you gotta remember the stroke order and yeah, try and make them not look funny, because, I don't know, sometimes I make mine look kind of funny. So i got to practice, and this definitely helps me practice. Um, another good book that I found at my library, it is Languages of the World by Kenneth Kotzner. It's got a foreword by Charles Berlitz right there. So this is a really cool book. It... I'll, I'll read you some of the introduction of the foreword. Let's see. It has been said that living in the world and speaking only one language is somewhat equivalent to living in an enormous mansion and staying in only one room. Those who acquire more than one language find fascinating new and different vistas opening before them, not only of practical opportunity but for the fulfillment of intellectual curiosity and the fascination of looking at the world from a background and a viewpoint of another culture. There are three to four thousand languages still spoken in the world today. Several thousand fewer, perhaps, than were spoken before the leveling surge of the great world languages of the present time, but nevertheless an awesome figure to the non-linguist. Of this number, over 200 are widely enough used to be classed as languages of international importance. In consideration, either the number of native speakers or the extent of the area over which the language is spoken. So, I mean, this is a pretty informative book. And it starts out listing all of the language families, the subgroups, the branch, the major languages, and minor languages of that branch. So it gives you a big detailed list right away in the beginning. And then after that, it will give you a big intro to uh, Indo-European languages. And it'll give you an example of all the Indo-European languages in comparison. And 
then it'll start going into the like Germanic languages and the Romance languages and whatnot. And it'll give you a description of each group or family and branch and whatnot. And after that, after it's done talking about all the families and branches and stuff, it will go into each individual language. And it will give you like a history on the language. And it will give you an example and translation. So this is Old English. Very cool, I think. I'd like to learn Old English someday. I think it's pretty cool. I love Germanic languages. Let's see. Here's one for German. This one for Flemish. Icelandic. I love Icelandic. I want to learn that one someday. Like I said, I love Germanic languages. Those are my favorites. Mm. Here's one with Georgian. Here's one of Hebrew. And then it even goes into languages I've never even heard of before. No idea even how to pronounce the names of these languages. Here's the one on Japanese. Gotta love Japanese. Here is Maori, which is a language I would actually like to learn someday. And the Maori are the native inhabitants of New Zealand. Historically, they are a Polynesian people whose original home was Tahiti. Their migration halfway across the Pacific Ocean is believed to have occurred in successive waves, the last and greatest taking place in the middle of the 14th century. Today, the Maori number about 200,000, almost all of whom who live on North Island. Only about half of them still speak the Maori language, which is slowly giving way to English. That's pretty unfortunate. But I definitely would love, love, love to learn this language. And it's known for having the longest words out of any language ever. Maori. Definitely, definitely the language I'd like to learn eventually. There's Samoan. That's a cool language, I think. Samoan. Got Hawaiian. Cherokee. Blackfoot. Crow. Sioux. Ojibwe. I'll show you the Cherokee one. It's pretty cool. running out of time, but let's see if I can't find you. Swahili. Oh, here it is. Swahili. That's the language I'm studying right now. Pretty cool. Yeah, this thing's just full, packed full of languages. Definitely a book I recommend. The Languages of the World by Kotzner. Remember, check your local library. There's definitely, definitely lots of resources there. I was surprised at what I found, even though it's a small selection. Anyways, goodbye for today.